Kayak for review today, guys, will be the Caracal C. We'll zoom in there for you. Um, I did do a slight, a quick review for the uh, F and the C a while back, but uh, we've got a lot more rounds through it now. A lot more people have shot it, and today we're going to focus just on the C. We'll get to the F at a later date. What we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, shooting here from the 12 meter line and uh, tabletop review, do some size comparisons, uh, try to answer the question that you always get when you show up at a range with a Caracal, which is, is it better than a Glock? Maybe. We'll get into that later. Um, and then uh, at the end we'll do a, a chronograph test with some popular carry loads and duty loads and uh, see how they perform out of this barrel. But right now we'll see if we can make some steel ring. Still having the same problem I had before where the uh, sometimes my thumb actuates the uh, slide lock. Other than that though, seems to be a pretty good gun. We'll get into it more here in the tabletop. We're going to go ahead and do the tabletop here real quick. Um, like we always do, we say how to disassemble the gun. You make sure it's empty, verify the chamber's empty, point safe direction, pull the trigger, pull back slightly on the slide, pull down on the tab, just like you would a Glock pistol. Um, slide comes off, remove it. While we have the gun apart here, I want to talk about a couple things. Um, One's the finish. It's a, it's got a, a nitrated plazox finish. They call it. Um, it's it's an excellent finish. There's very little wear on this gun, and there are quite a few rounds through it. It's holding up exceptionally well. I do keep it well lubricated, or properly lubricated, if you will. Um, so I'm not running any sort of torture tests, and I clean it frequently. But I mean, it's really holding up extremely well. Um, another thing, while we have it apart here, is this is the trigger safety here on the Caracal. Um, it moves to the side instead of up a la an M&P or a Glock pistol. Uh, it's one of the things that helps make the trigger pull so good on it. Uh, it's fantastic. The reassemble, you just go back in the opposite direction. And one other thing I wanted to point out while we have it apart here is these uh, long rails here on the frame. Um, they're integral um, steel rails. They're much longer than the Glock. Um, and one of the reasons they did it, they said, is to reduce frame flexing. My guess is, um, obviously since that's the same designer as the uh, Glock and the Steyr pistols, he uh, realized that with some of the problems the Glock was having with the 40 caliber um, and working with tactical lights attached, it was due to flame, frame flexing. Um, so I, I think that's one of the reasons they made these longer because this pistol is scheduled to come out with a 40 caliber model um, as well as 357 SIG, 9x21, and I believe 45 is uh, what they've mentioned. Um, to reassemble, just rack the slide and you're done. Um, a couple quick things here. The yeah, Caracal's new, if you will, newer to the U.S. market but it's not a new gun. Uh, 2006, it went through some serious testing over in Germany from the German Armed Forces Technical Center for Weapons. Um, it passed with flying colors. It's a very difficult test, and uh, it's, it complies with all NATO D14 standards, which there's not a lot of guns that do. I mean, there are some, there's, there's, I shouldn't say there's not a lot. There are some guns that do it, but there, there are some of the guns that we consider to be excellent handguns in general. Um, some of the unique things about the Caracal here um, is the rear sight. It's, it's integral into the firing pin housing. Um, it's something that most people don't like. I generally don't like it either, either because it makes it harder to put aftermarket sights on there. They do use, as you can see, straight eight type sights, um, which I like. I, I do like straight eight sights a lot. Right now, in the U.S., there's no night sights or fiber optic available. Uh, it shows fiber optic on their website, but I talked to Caracal literally last week. Uh, they said they still don't have a date for them uh, coming into the U.S. That's it. Straight from Caracal USA's mouth. Um, one thing, obviously, that this gun is known for is having an extremely low bore axis. If you look here, the back of my hand, you can see how low that, that fits right in the web of my hand. Um, combine that with the uh, 9mm cartridge, it's a very soft, soft shooting gun. Do a quick comparison there in terms of bore axis. This here is our SIG P229 versus the Caracal. I want you to just take a look at how those sit in my hand. You can see how much higher the SIG is versus the um, Caracal. A 9mm doesn't make that big of a difference, but um, when you start getting into a, the calibers with a little more uh, recoil, like the 40, the 45, 57 that I was talking about, it's, it's going to make a bigger difference. Um, other things people don't like about it, I'm trying to think. Uh, it's, it's made in the U United Arab Emirates, so some people in the United States have an issue with that. Um, it's also made in Germany, but the guns that are coming here to the U.S. are only made in the United Arab Emirates. That may change at some point. Um, the biggest con, if you will, of the gun 
in my opinion, is the uh, slide lock, slide lock lever. When I first saw it, um, I really liked it because if you have malfunctions and you need to do some sort of emergency manipulation, it's very easy to actuate. So if you need to push up on it, track the slide, clear any malfunction, get it back into, into the fight, it's easy to manipulate. That said, where people use a thumbs forward grip as I do, it does tend to be uh, actuated and you, you lose uh, slide lock on the last shot. That said, all you have to do is move your thumb like that. It's a training issue, so when you saw me do it out there at the range, don't think you're necessarily going to do it. Um, if I consciously think about it, I never hit it. But sometimes when I'm just, just going after bang and steal, I forget I do uh, put pressure on it. Um, trying to think. We're getting to some size comparisons here real quick. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you show up at a range with a Caracal, somebody's going to ask you if it's better than a Glock. That happens about 80% of the time you show up with one in public. Is it better than a Glock? Well, like I said, maybe. Um, the trigger's better, in my opinion. Although I do really like the Glock trigger, the Caracal may have the best trigger of any, any semi-automatic uh, striker fired pistol I've ever fired. It's a big statement, I know that. <laughs> um, it's very smooth pull, it's got a very crisp break. And to reset, it just travels 0.3 inches, positive reset, engages again. Um, the reset is definitely longer than what you'd see on like the PPQ, but I like that. Um, I, I think it's uh, it, it's just enough that, that you don't have to worry about the accidental um, accidental double tap under stress, if you will. I've seen people do that with the PPQ pistol. Um, now moving on to the Glock, just a couple quick comparisons. The Glock's obviously going to win in um, aftermarket support. It has tons. Caracal, since it's relatively new to the U.S. market, isn't there yet. I think it probably will get there. Um, as word of how good these pistols are grows. Um, but right now, um, Glock's gonna, gonna trump that by a lot. They've been here for 20 years and they're the standard that other striker prior pistols are, are measured by for a reason. Um, the gun weighs 25 ounces, um, but you'd never know it cheating it. It's a, the most mild recoiling 9mm gun uh, I've probably ever shot, and that includes 9mm 1911s. Um, the first couple of times I shot it, I literally disassembled it because I thought I might have had a squib load. That's how, that's how light it recoils. And you can see that out there when I'm shooting it, guys. It barely moves in my hand. Um, that'll sum it up for now. But uh, it's a great gun, 15 plus 1. Uh, one of these days, we'll get around to redoing the uh, Caracal F review, the full-size brother. Just a quick comparison so you guys can see what they look like next to each other. Um, a little bit bigger. Uh, three more rounds in the magazine. That's a great gun also. We'll get around to that one of these days. But uh, as always, guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. But up next will be the chronograph test with some duty, duty ammo through this gun. All right. Thanks. Time to see what kind of real world numbers we're going to get here for the Caracal C. We're going to be going uh, top to bottom there as, as the uh, ammo is laid out. We'll do two rounds of each. So uh, up first will be the Gold Dot 124 grain, then the Federal HST 124 grain, then the uh, Winchester Ranger 115 grain, standing at a distance of about seven feet. It's uh, 80 degrees out here today, very humid, it's got to be close to 100%. All right, let's see what we get. 1,200. HST is next. And that'll do it.